Howdy, Possum Patty here, little Titi too. Titi was taking a nap, but she woke up. I think I woke her up. Anyway, it is Friday and it is time for hashtag Flip Through Friday, hosted by Christina down at the shack. And I'm gonna do a little bit different kind of flip through today. So I'm gonna take you over to the shelf over there and show you what I mean. I am always showing you all these wonderful junk journals and the top three shelves are all journals that are completed. And I think I flipped through all of those. So if you haven't seen some of my earlier junk journal flip throughs, I'll list those below. I have a whole playlist for these journals, but below those three shelves is the Journals in progress there. You see my Christmas giant monster journal, my winter journal, my kitty boho journal, and my glue book, and my beach journal, and my trashies, and my slow stitch journal. And then down here, you might remember I made a shabby chic journal and a steampunk journal, and I have a watercolor journal. And then these are the little golden book journals that I'll be doing and a whole bunch of little golden books there. So these are journals that are not in progress right now, but they're on the shelf to be done. I'll be working on these throughout 2023. But way down here, <laughs> where the cat is, look at all these journals down here. And these are watercolor journals. And these are mixed media journals. And there's a couple little um, Jane Davenport journals back in there. And we got some notebooks over there. So there's all kinds of journals down here. Now these are like environmental education journals. And these are all sort of a mix, cosmic smash of art journaling, nature journaling, daily journaling. And these are mostly just like sketches and watercolors, learning how to use watercolor journals. So I think I'm going to start with just some nature journaling. I want to show you my very first nature journal. And then as we go along, you can see how my journaling has progressed. So this is my very first nature journal. I called it Nature Notebook. And we'll go over to the other camera and flip through this. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison between how I started and what I'm doing now. But there's a whole many years journey in between. But I, just to give you an idea of, you know, where you might start and what your very first pages might look like. But if you keep it up for, you know, years and years and years, you know, I'll just show you what maybe it might turn into. So this is my very first nature notebook. I even put a little tiny number one there. And it's just a cardboard little sketchbook spiral binding. And I like this binding at first because you could flip the page and you had something to lean on because I was walking and taking notes or standing and sketching. So this is the one I started with. And my very first nature journal page and my very first nature journal is I sketched an acorn. <laughs> all in all in pencil here. And I tried to learn some new new words as I was going along. And I was on a hike at Hawk Mountain in Berks County, Pennsylvania with a botany professor. And he was talking and I was just taking notes. I did one little tiny sketch down here of sassafras leaves. And he was talking about um, the hemlock trees getting attacked by the woolly, woolly adelgid. He gave us a lot of information about acorns. This was another walk. This one was around my yard. And I've got a more detailed sketch because I'm in the yard and I'm not trying to follow a group of people. Also in the yard, I'm trying to learn the shape uh, that the flowers bloom in. They all have a name. <laughs> this is a panicle, I think. 
And this one's got some other information in it. And I like ethnobotany. I want to be an ethnobotanist when I grow up. And that's like, how did people use plants? Did they use them for medicine, for food, for making musical instruments in ceremonies? And so I started writing some of those things down here, like Thomas Edison experimented making rubber out of the goldenrod. And that was during the war when they couldn't get the ships to bring the rubber from South America. And there's a nice little sketch there of toad flax. And more sketching, just very simple. This is called white cockle, it's Celine. The old name, the new name I've got down there. And if you don't like your drawings, um, you can always just put a lot of labels on them. <laughs> labels make any drawing look better. <laughs> this was a very detailed drawing of a burr cucumber. And it's just got all these, it's a very odd shape, like three-dimensional kind of stars with all these little bristles coming out of them. And a little tiny, tiny drawing there. I can't get up to see if I'm focusing because Chi Chi's in my lap. Flowers seen on a walk. Just a lot of note taking here. And where was this was? Oh, I'm with Dave Bigal. Pine Grove, Echo Valley Campground, Black Creek, Walk to the Red Hole Valley. Sweet tea. I haven't looked at this in a while. So this is a plant that the Native Americans used to make tea from. It's a native shrub called sweet fern. The deer like to eat it in the winter time. Here's my um, witch hazel. I just journaled about this the other day. This was witch hazel back in 2007. Oh, we went to Virginia Beach. Took a couple notes there. And we were hiking at the wildlife refuge. The cottonmouth water moccasin was on the path. That's a funny story. <laughs> I'm counting birds here. I did a bird count. We were uh, in, rented a house on the beach. The whole family was there trying to learn about ghost crabs. March 2008, went to the Frida Kahlo exhibit at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I just sketched this in the car. <laughs> I'm not very good at faces, but I do love the little bird there. I used colored pencils and the, the brochure. December 1st, kind of cold this day. We were hiking along this little creek, and it was so cold it was hard to sketch. <laughs> but I did manage to get something down, and that's what's important. I did take a couple of notes when we got back to the car. I remember this one. This is a red twig dogwood. It's a native from the car because it was so cold and I don't know taking notes about painting there taking notes oh this is at Noldy Forest I think looks like it Berks County some kind of big rock thing there <laughs> um, I have no idea what this is unless I read the whole thing on a walk with somebody Oh, Joseph Cornell, he wrote a lot of um, nature books, Journey to the Heart of Nature, Activity. Oh, I know, I was on an um, educator's retreat because I had a workshop with him. And just some leaves and rocks on the ground. And this was at the retreat. They had a little um, show. <laughs> little entertainment at dinner time while we were there and a Philadelphia flower show I was just sketching some of the flowers there I drew a covered bridge I know it's hard to see it's very light pencil I never finished it marsh marigolds that is with colored pencil so I've gone from using just a lead pencil to adding some color pencil Hawk Mountain Native Plant Garden, Horsetail, and Parts of a Log. Hmm. This was a workshop, River of Words, Rocks, Plants, oh this is French Creek, 
blue-eyed grass, star of Bethlehem, bluets. Oh, this is at a um, workshop, too, because we were doing blind contours. <laughs> I swear you don't look at the paper and you draw. That was a lot of fun. And I was learning how to add different information to my nature journal. So I got sunrise, sunset, moon phase, where you are, what the weather is. So once you get into the nature journaling, you learn how to set up the page. And this is called metadata, where you're writing um, the date, where you are, the weather, temperature, the time, and other things like sunrise, sunset, moon phase, etc. And that's all metadata for whatever it is you're observing. And here's some plant sketches as we're going down the trail. And this was uh, camping in the cabin. There was a little flying squirrel running up and down the screen all night long, keeping me awake. They have very big eyes. And I love this picture of mushrooms. I don't know why. It's just a funky picture of some mushrooms. <laughs> And a, a harvestman or long leg, daddy long legs, we call them here. And the little mushrooms coming up. I don't know why, but this is like one of my very first mushroom pictures, and I kind of like it. I have many more since then, but, you know, your first one is always so special. Tried to sketch a butterfly. I took the journal with me to um, a fiddle festival, Bluegrass. And I'm not very good with people at all, but this guy was playing the spoons sitting in his wheelchair. She was playing the guitar. There's another guy with a beard with a guitar. He had a sunburst on his guitar. And this was at my sister's house. I was just using some watercolors and this is, I was looking at a picture that my grandmother had painted while I was doing that. And we were driving somewhere, and I was just doing some sketching here. I'm getting much more colorful with the um, colored pencils. Really putting on the color. You can see the difference here between the color on that one and wherever that, that first one is. I should mark it. There. See how lightly that is? How lightly I, I use the pencils? And look, now I'm trying to get some color down on the page. Lots of color. This was a Merritt Parkway in Connecticut, and Mr. Possum was driving, and I was just sketching all the color that was on the side of the road. Asters, Phragmites, maple trees, staghorn shumac, freezing rain. Oh, this is like um, the road cuts and the water was coming. The groundwater comes out of the rocks and then it freezes. Another blind contour. I think this was another workshop. We're doing quick two-minute sketches. Learning how to cross hatch. This is from an Edith Holden book. Uh, sketching from the car, Connecticut, skunk cabbage everywhere. And I don't know what I was doing here, but I was sketching eggs. Oh, probably practicing shading, light source and shading. It's a little frog down here. It's a rain gauge. It's not even a real frog. Still with the plants, lots of plant, lots of note taking, lots of writing, and that's it. So this is my very first nature journal. Now we're going to skip to one of the very latest, not my junk journals, but just, you know, the journal journals. And I just want to show you the difference in the pages <laughs> as we go along for reference. And the first page here is about three birds. And even my writing, instead of trying to put down all that technical information, I've just got kind of like a shape story going on here. To the robin on the snag, good morning and hello. Greetings and salutations to the red-tailed hawk and the chipping sparrow. 
There's a fire dot lichen on the tree. What do you know? I found all three. And for the weather, I put the sky is a gray flannel blanket. Oh, I know. It says red, orange, and rusty. I was looking for red, orange, and rusty. So I found the robin, the hawk, the fire dot, and the chipping sparrow with a rusty cap there. So that's what that was about. And look how colorful. I still have information in here. Here's my metadata up here. And there's a whole system of recording rain and drizzle. <laughs> and um, the moon phase. And now I'm painting in the background. This is watercolor markers here just having fun. Look how bright and colorful. I got the cardinal over here. And partridge berry here. Red twig maple butt and twig over there. This is probably poison ivy. What's this? Oh, that's a primrose stalk. Okay. I have a stamp. I'm showing the amount of rain we got. Weather watch. So instead of just writing like we had a quarter of inch of rain, I just stamped it and I drew in how much and I'm putting color in the words. And this is very, very colorful, isn't it? Grouping things together by color. And look at this. This is so fun. Look what I did to the words. And that's just taking a watercolor marker and coloring in the letters and then using a paintbrush to wet them out. Uh, there is a low mist in the wood. It is a good day to study lichen. And that is something Thoreau said. And then I have a magnifying... Um, little tiny egg. It looks like an egg, but it's a magnifier you plug into your computer. And I was looking at different lichens here and sketching what they look like through that magnifier. And because these are gray and black, I really went crazy with all these uh, colors around the edge here. Now I do have um, more detailed videos on these journals, I believe. So I can link some of this below. And again, I was learning how to do different weather signs. I even forgot about this. I'm glad I'm looking back at this. Uh, looking at leaves, I put my third ordinary happiness is looking at leaves and all the different shapes of leaves. May Day, doing some sketching, recording the rain, recording the weather, using some fancy letters here with the plants growing up, the May Day. And this is a couple plants growing here coming up in the spring and the rocks with the moss and the lichens and this was a plant that was coming up through a leaf that had fallen on the ground got the sky got a bird up in the sky there and this was on May 4th so of course may the 4th be with you and I have this tree in the backyard that looks like somebody sliced it with a saber lightsaber so <laughs> I drew in Darth Vader and the tree that looks like it was sliced with a lightsaber because whimsy in the journal is mandatory. You can't just have like my first journal here is not so interesting at all. It is to me, but because uh, I finally got some color in there and finally got some interesting things to say. But when I started off, I was like, I didn't know what I was doing. So, you know, you just start. That's all. You just start and you work your way up to something really fun. Oh, this is a big wolf spider with his egg sac. And my stepdaughter found these by the mushroom. These are called wood ear jelly fungus. And Mr. Possum was putting the weather vane up on the shed. All kinds of things going on. And then I started to get interactive. And this is a um, this was around Cinco de Mayo, so that was Mexican was sort of on my brain. And I drew a picture of a little jumping spider. <laughs> and then I drew a Mexican hat. And this is just, oh, I have journaling on the back. And this is about the little spider. I put a magnet in there. And this is just colored with markers. Cloud report. Love doing cloud reports. I put the um, 
seed packet in there. I probably have some journaling. Yes, I do about the zinnias. I was loving doing these words for a while. So colorful. There's my zinnias, my hummingbird. And oh, the hummingbird pooed on the front porch. I thought that was so cute. It was this little tiny hummingbird poo on the front porch. And I know it was a hummingbird because I saw him do it. Kind of like this zinnia picture here. It came out good, didn't it? Okay, moving on. Here's my boots. And I'm showing, here's my leg, showing how tall these uh, fiddleheads were. And these are all different fern species. And this one, I was growing some zinnias from sea. And all these mean something. I completely forgot what they mean, but they all do mean something. I need to go back and look at that. Oh, and there's a little oven bird hit our front window, but he was okay. Just sat on the front porch for a little while. And this is a walkabout. So you kind of like walk somewhere and then journal what you see along the way. So... I started over here. Oh, this is the clearing in the back. And then these were the things that I saw. Blueberry bushes, birch tree, fiddleheads, goldenrod stalks, all the way back down. Pileated woodpecker holes in the tree. Here's some mushrooms and some moss. <laughs> Little tiny mushrooms and moss. Lots of fern sketches in the spring. And here's a toad. Look down. Look down at the toad. Look up. I got a little squirrel. I got a couple critters going here now. And this was a very strange sketch of a tree. It had a very weird shape. And then I just drew on top of it some plants. And this is an azalea. Oh, this is a rhododendron. Wild rhododendron, not the uh, kind you you know plant in your garden. That one's growing wild. I've got ferns here, kinds of information about leaves and ferns. And now I got some birds here. Red winged blackbird. Jack in the pulpit. I love to sketch the jack in the pulpits. Rose breasted grosbeak. I was so excited when this came to the feeder. Don't see those too often. Just lots of journaling, mostly plants, but I do, you know, here's a frog. <laughs> Spring peeper, there's a bumblebee, more ferns. I mean, it's very detailed. I can't go over everything on a page or I'll be here forever, but I there are there are videos on all these, I think. I'm pretty sure there are. Nice big swallowtail there, some mushrooms. Here's a snake and he's shedding. That's why the eyes are blue there and the skin's coming off. And this is a bone set. Eupatorium perfilatum. <laughs> uh, let's see. Just very colorful. Look at this. I just, here's some ladybugs having fun down here. And here's a nymph of the, it says nymph of the frog hopper bug can leap far. Hmm. I really need to go back and study this again before spring comes. Slime mold in the front yard. Here's the spider with all the million babies on her back. She's carrying them around, trying to draw a rose. Oh, here, I love these beetles. These are, what, the six-spotted tiger beetles. They're so shiny, they look like jewels. Dragonflies are coming out. All kinds of things, just leaves, wild lettuce. Butterflies, monarch butterfly. 
um, damselfly, all different kinds of leaves. I just, I get fascinated by this shape of leaves. Oh, here we got a bird. Oh, this was my very first blue-gray gnat catcher. And I found that down by the stone wall in the front. And here the uh, Jack in the Pulpit was making little tiny green berries. That's my thumb <laughs> to show how small that was. Oh, and this was amazing. There was a white squirrel up the dirt lane here. I didn't see it too much after this. Red velvet mite. And this was a fern prothalus. And a dragonfly. Look at the wings on the dragonfly. Shimmering. Got a lady beetle down there. Got all kinds of things here. I got a little frog down here. <laughs> a little bird over there. Some flowers. Dragonfly. Big bug. Where is this? Daddy long legs. Um, yep, daddy long legs. I wrote some information around. Oh, and I painted this black and I painted a, a mason jar and I put a little firefly in there. That is funny. Oh, and um, big slug here. And, um, if you know uh, John Muir Laws, who has a nature journaling channel, you might be familiar with that if you're into nature journaling. And he's written several books about nature journaling, and I've, I've done workshops with him. He's in California, actually. And this is one of the pages that he liked the best, the beautiful and the sublime. <laughs> I've got a big slug there. And playing with rocks, using lots of sparkly paint there. Big turtle. I like this. In times of disturbances and chaos, the universe will send you a symbol to help you slow down, give you emotional strength and understanding, determination, and persistence so you can stay grounded. <laughs> the universe sent me a turtle. <laughs> I made this little weather stamp there. This is a Native American symbol for a thunderstorm. There's a little bee there. I even put some uh, fancy edges on some of the pages there. Oh, here's my possum. This is Butterfly the Possum. I was feeding it a mashed brown banana mixed with stale beer and I don't know, something else. <laughs> I had this whole recipe. Uh, I called it Butterfly Banana Pudding. And I, I have a picture of her with a stealth cam. It's not very clear, but I believe I do show it in this video. And I like this uh, catbird picture down here. And then I have a little cartoon. <laughs> what do the deer eat? What's on the menu? Pokeweed, bone set, jewelweed, evening primrose, lactu latuka, mixed greens. What do the deer eat? They eat everything. Oh, and there's this little bird. And I think it's a blue-winged warbler. I saw that up the road. I've never seen one of those before. And look at this is like lumpy here. These are actual rubies that I chipped out of a rock. Not rubies, I'm sorry, garnets. Uh, there's a rock around here where the little garnets form in these quartz formation and I stood there with a ham oops I stood there with a hammer and chipped out a bunch of the garnets and then I glued them into the page there so I'm always adding rocks to my books shiny um, dragonfly there Titi's back and this is at the beach Got some seaweed, some shiny paint on there, give it some shimmer. And the last page is a gull. And then the rose hips, the beach roses. And oh, I was keeping bird watch in the yard. And as of 2020, I 
<laughs> she's pushing me away, um, away from the table. 31 species of birds in the yard. So you can see that this one from 2020 is a lot different than this one from 2007. So it doesn't matter what you do, just start. And like I said, if you don't know what to put on the first page, skip the first page and just start with something. It doesn't matter. Sketch a leaf, sketch an acorn, trace something, take a picture, put it in there, cut something out of a nature book, put that in there and yeah, just get started. It's a lot of fun. If you're a nature journaler, nature journaler, there is something to do every single day. Just look out the window. If you live in the city, look out the window. There is nature everywhere. Birds are everywhere. Trees are everywhere. Cracks in the sidewalk, the little weeds come up through cracks in the sidewalks, right? So no matter where you are, you don't have to go to Yellowstone Park to do nature journaling. You don't have to go to a nature center to do nature journaling. You can do it out your window, in your yard, on your walk, wherever you are. Whenever you are, you can do some nature journaling. So if you want to join me for some nature journaling, maybe we should come up with a ha hashtag uh, so I will know where to come and find you. So there's already a lot of nature journaling hashtags. So I don't, what if we just put my name on there? Nature journaling with Possum Patty. So we use hashtag nature journaling with Possum Patty because there's a lot of other nature journal channels. And this will be just for this little group here. Whoever watches this video and wants to join in in my crafty community of junk journalers, art journalers, and... Anybody who follows us, if you want to post something on social media, mostly on YouTube, we can use the hashtag Nature Journaling with Possum Patty. And this way I can find you and you can find me and we can help each other through this process of nature journaling. So I hope you will join me in doing at least a page now and then of nature journaling. You don't have to do it every day. Um, it gets to be a little overwhelming if you do it every single day. But, you know, every once in a while, get out, take a walk, and observe something. I think this is every day here. Oh, I did the project. I did uh, nature journaling every day for 100 days as part of a project. So, yeah, that, that was quite a project. <laughs> That was quite a project. Okay, so I hope you will join me if this makes any sense. And once in a while, putting a little nature into your junk journal or into your art journal or your mixed media journal, it doesn't matter how you do it. If you do writing, if you do sketching, if you cut out pictures from magazines and put them in, doesn't matter. But I would like to come and support you if you do that. So use the hashtag nature journaling with possum patty. Thanks for coming along today. Bye-bye.